Hey everyone, and thanks for watching 3dmotive.com. My name is Cordell Felix, and on this video, I will show you how to add metal and rusty scratches to a texture in Photoshop. This technique is perfect for adding scratches to a weapon or adding rusty scratches to a weather prop. I will be using Photoshop 6 for this video, and this video assumes that you have a basic knowledge of texturing in Photoshop. I'm going to be using my Orc Battle Axe here to demonstrate how I added these metallic scratches to the end of the blade here. Let's hop onto Photoshop and start adding some scratches. I'll disable the scratches I have on the blade of the axe in my layers so then I can create new ones. I'm going to be using a scatter type brush, so let me add a new layer to show this brush. And I have the color on white. And this is a kind of a rough brush, so if I use the strokes you can see the edges are very rough. I'll attach my brush set as a download link. If you download my brush set, then you load it up by going to this little cog here, and go to load brushes. You'll see that at the very bottom I have this little square brush, and the default size is 3. So if I click that and use it, you can see that it works. And then for the settings of the brush, I can hit F5, and you can see that it has shape dynamics for pen pressure for my Wacom tablet, and it's got scattering too. So you can mess with these if you wanted to, but I'll just keep it default. So yeah. When I use this brush, I like to have it at about at the size of about uh, one or two. So if I use the brackets, I can change this. I'm gonna keep it at two for this video. And I like the opacity to be at 60 or 55, one of those. That way when I do the brush strokes, uh, I can t I can determine if I want to make them show more just by overlaying on top of the same one. And using the pen pressure with a Wacom tablet, I can make a lot of these scratches really come to life. You can see the results look nice. So I can be light, I can be heavy. Before I add the scratches, I like to make a layer and then fill that with white. And then I like to add a light layer mask and then fill that with black. That way when I bring my scratches in, I can use the white color to bring the scratches in and then erase the scratches with the color black. That's all with the properties of the layer mask. So I'll, this is how I like to add my scratches. It's a lot easier to do other than using the regular brush on a, on a layer and then using just a hard eraser on this because maybe I could use this effect, or let me go to the layer mask. I could use this effect to bring the scratch in and then maybe I could erase some out by using the mask. So you can get some pretty cool effects with that. So I'll be using the layer mask for the scratches. Make sure you name your layer scratches or something like that. I'll just name it scratches by double clicking on the name and then renaming it. And now I'm ready to add the scratches. So make sure I'm on top of the mask. And I have my normal AO uh, mat, uh, multiplied on top of my diffuse layer, so I can tell sort of where the divots are from the sculpt that I had, or the normal information that I baked in. So that way I can add these scratches in these areas, and I know that it'll be okay. So most of the strokes that I add when I add the scratches, I'll do long strokes and short strokes, or I'll just do some very light strokes with the Wacom tablet, so that way they'll be very, very subtle. You can see with enough strokes, you can really get it to look scratched up. And this is just on a flat surface. So if I was to follow this divot here, I'll probably spend a bit more time on adding the scratches. So I, I can see that kind of goes in here. Probably go a larger brush, I can fill it up more. Go back to about size of two. Come back in here and add those scratches back in. Maybe some of the scratches kind of hopped back up here. And this is very, very overdoing it because you can see how bright this white is. Maybe afterwards I'll bring this opacity down a lot and then I'll do the rest for the specular. But this is just for this video. So really pay attention to how your strokes are. You don't want to do too many of stuff like this. That's just not realistic. You want to do some, some fat, some very short, some that climb up like that. You know, scratches are very random. I've done a lot of scratch studying and if anything looks a little wonky, I can just use my black brush and erase some of these parts. This end got a little bit too fat. I can even turn this into something that I could work with. So let me fill that up a bit. Go to my black brush and then maybe bring the opacity up a little bit so it raises a little higher. I want to go to a brush size of one. Kind of come in, actually let's go back to two. And come back in here and erase some of that out. So something you can usually make anything work as long as you spend the time on it. So what I did before is I went up this entire blade with this scratch technique and you know it, towards the end it looked like that. And of course with more time it'll look a lot better. I'll continue adding a bit more scratches on the end of the blade 
just so you can kind of tell my workflow and how it works. So let's go ahead. It's nice to also do some like random scratches around a whole surface. So if I go to a very small brush, uh, like the size of one, and I just do a couple th things like this, I'll just do a bunch of those, just very long strokes. That way they'll really pop out in the specular. So I'll do this maybe across the entire, whoa. You don't, want, you don't want that to happen. You want it to be very, very subtle. Oh, sometimes that happens too. Just control Z those out. See that there's a bunch of them already in, in the surface, mostly because of the sculpt. But these things really pop out in the specular, and that's what I want to happen. You can see they look pretty cool. You can do any any shape you want; it doesn't really matter. I just do lines. Now I'm pretty much done with the metal scratches, so I'm gonna go ahead and do some rust scratches now, and it'll be really quick. So if I go to my uh, textures, and I have a tileable rust texture here, so I'm gonna drag that into Photoshop here, and it's it's an okay looking rust texture. I'm just using it for the base and let's do it on this edges also I guess. So let's drag another layer of this down. It's tileable so it should look fine when it's connected. There we go. Merge those layers. So it's kind of the same thing as doing the metal scratches. So how this works is that I will be adding a, another layer mask to the rust texture and I'm going to fill this with black so that it erases the rust. And then I will bring the rust back with the white brush and it kind of works exactly the same way as the metal scratches, is that I will just be brushing them back in, just like that. And this works great for like metal signs, like warning signs, or no trespassing signs, or just for any prop that really needs just some extra rust. And I really should be doing, doing this kind of stuff on like crevices and stuff like that, or maybe even some open surfaces or areas like this, where just rust would build up. Here's some examples of some rusted signs that I did. Just I, I need some weathered looking signs, so I added some rusty scratches, some leaky bolts, stuff like that. So you can see on some of these edges, I really added those rusty scratches. That about wraps it up for this quick tip. Make sure that you spend more time on the scratches to, to get them to look as realistic as possible. You don't want any weird looking scratches in there. My name is Cordell Felix, and thank you again for watching 3dmotive.com.